Okay, so today we're going to kind of reveal how much compression we're running in our saws that we ran at the last races and, um, you know, we were able to pull off some wins. So, so there's a lot of debate out there um, in Wonderland, I guess you can say, about whether or not you should push your compression up or keep it low or all that stuff. And I'm going to kind of discuss some of that and my, my opinion on the matter. Because my opinion is kind of varied, if you know what I mean. So we're actually going to compression test one of the saws. This is the pull-in. This is the one that uh, kind of is gaining in popularity. The, the one saw in my collection that kind of rose to popularity because of how well it's running. And the other one is my 372 clone that Bellhopper built. Because um, it took off a first place victory. Um, and because the other guy kind of messed up, his, his saw stalled on him. To at, Right at the start of the, the race, it really was no, you know what I mean? It was, it was an easy win for me, I guess you can say. But the question is, would he have caught up to me or, or passed me or beat me? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. But these are the two saws that we ran at the races, and we're going to look at how much compression they both run in, and you can kind of come up with your own opinion on the matter. Because some folks say keep the compression lower, and some folks will tell you to keep it higher. And me, I'm kind of do what's necessary for the situation kind of person. So, in some situations, run it high. Some situations, run it low. That's kind of the way I feel. So, let's go ahead and, well, the blue 372 clone that Bellhopper built. Um, I have compression tested, that's all. I've been keeping an eye on it since the day I've, I got it. And whenever I received that saw, it was just barely tickling 100, or sorry, sorry, 200 pounds of compression it was just under probably like 198 something like that. that that was the day i got it and after a while running it i thought the saw had broke in and i did a compression test on it and it had bumped up almost to 220 now that i've had the saw for a very long time and been running it you know a decent amount the compression is actually up to 245 pounds of compression now is that going to be an accurate situation for everybody on a fresh build? And I'd say no. Um, normally you don't get that much compression over a period of time as they break in. But this one did for some reason. So I can't explain that. I can just, all I'll say is it must have been a really poor seal between the ring and the cylinder for a very long time. And it took a long time for it to build up properly. Um, you know what I mean? But that's kind of the way it is. And that saw took first at this last race. It, it is a fast saw. If you've seen it run, it's it's got some speed to it. It's just when you watch it in a piece of like hardwood, it's hard to say, yeah, that's a fast saw. You know what I mean? Um, it's not until you're comparing it to other stuff. And you see that at, you know, at the races with me. So I really don't do comparison videos, comparing one saw to another and all that stuff. Um, I don't do that because of, you know, a lot of folks take that the wrong way and think it's more of a thing about one builder being better than another. And that's not it. Um, once you get into building these things and so forth, you understand more about what I'm talking about. Um, because some saws are just a lot more difficult than others. And you can have two of the exact same saw, and one of them just wants to be a pain in the butt. You know what I mean? So, and then you'll also flip it around and have one that, like, very easily just turns up really easily and everything. And it's, it, how do you say that's a better builder or anything like that? Because you can't. It's, because no, no two saws are the same. Um, when you go with OEM only, 
and build your saws like that and stuff, you, your results will probably be closer. But one person might build a saw with more torque than another. And you need to be in a situation where the builder of the saw gets to set up the saw that with the chain that we want it. I mean, think of drag racing or anything like that. You want to set the proper tires under the car, you know, for your race. And it's best if the builder made those decisions because some are going to have different torque levels than others. So you need to make sure that, you know, the chain is tweaked for each one. And each one's going to probably be different. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's to bring it to its fullest potential. You know what I mean? But that's part of the reason why I don't do those comparison videos. Um, I just feel like the, the builder should be involved with that. And that's why I pretty much leave it to the racing, you know? Um, if you're showing up with the races with your saw and you're not happy with its performance, well, you know, um, that's the one opportunity I'm going to take to compare my stuff to other saws. And, you know, that's kind of what we're doing. We're racing them, you know, we're comparing them. And that's pretty much what I limit it to. Now, let's go ahead and do the compression test on this pull-in. I keep rambling on here. Let's do this compression test, see what it's sitting at, and then we'll continue here about this compression discuss it. Alrighty. Alright, I got the compression tester on her. Let's go ahead and yank on the cord here. There is no compression release on this saw. So the Hopper 372 is sitting at 245 pounds of compression and this one's sitting really close to 240. I would say probably 238. So there's a lot of debate there with that. You know what I mean? So 238 pounds of compression on the Poland. 245 on the 372 clone. So, you know, it doesn't matter what I say. I think folks are going to come up with their own opinion. Really. It's me. This is, these are my builds. These are the way I do it. Personally, I think bringing your compression down some is going to help you rev out. I do. Um, and what I'm talking about is things like your free rev. Uh, you know, you're not cutting a piece of wood at all. You're just free revving it. I think it'll really help that RPM wind out a lot higher because these, both of these saws peak out on a free rev, I think in 14, five ish, somewhere in that neighborhood. And you'll see a lot of folks really getting them to wind out at like 16, 17, 18, 19,000 RPM. I don't think that's going to be capable with a higher compression build. I think the compression is going to slow down, basically like put the brakes on before you get to that point. The thing is, if you're making contact with the wood and you're cutting at 11, 12,000 you know what I mean? Does running that lower com lower compression or whatever really help you when it matters? I guess you could say that's that's the kind of the point that I'm kind of kind of say here is does it really matter where or does it really come into play at the moment that it really matters is that's actually making your cut through the wood? Um, I find the higher compression is a little more forgiving on on you like how much you push into the wood. So if you say you try to push too hard and you start stalling the saw and she bogs and stalls out and stuff, the higher compression I find really helps 
with a lot of that and, and makes it more forgiving. Um, it's, it's like it focuses the torque more in your peak RPM range of where you're set to run at. It's almost like it really helps to focus your, your power into that RPM range. Um, where you might stretch your RPM out wider with a lower compression number, the, the, the higher compression shortens that and helps to focus it more, I think. Me personally, I think you should learn how to do both. Um, ultimately, like say we're gonna go to alcohol or nitromethane, let's say we're going to nitromethane and we really want this thing to stretch out in the RPM, we're not gonna be able to do it with crazy or, or crazy compression numbers. We have to get the compression down. You know what I mean? Uh, we gotta really run some long durations and all that stuff. And methanol, methanol likes more compression than gas, but will it still affect, will that compression affect you in your RPM? I don't know. I'm, I'm really new in with playing with that stuff. So I couldn't tell you, but I, I can tell you with gas, with us running, you know, most people are cutting around at the races. You're what, 12, five. I mean, your best performing saws are going to be right around 12, five at the races. And I don't think that's high enough, a high enough RPM number to, to worry about your compression as much, you know, if it ends up getting kind of high, that's kind of my opinion on it. But I, I do think it has a lot to do with the style of build you're doing. Some, like there's a, there's, you know, there's a lot of folks out there be like, that guy who's known to be the best. So me, my opinion on that kind of a discussion is like, that person specializes in a certain type of build so do those techniques still apply to me basically a i don't know beginner i would say i'm a beginner you know so do those techniques still apply to my type of build you know what i mean that's the question do those techniques still apply especially because this person is known to be running different fuels and all that stuff where I'm running gas. I, th yeah, I don't know. Does that make sense to you? It does me. I'm trying to do this in a manner where it makes sense to you. I'm not doing this to be like your, your method sex or nothing like that. This isn't that kind of a bit. This is, this is just to get people thinking about this subject a little more. That's all this video is about, is to get everybody thinking more. Does lower compression help you? Especially when you're in a situation at the races. So are you building stuff at 150, 60 pounds of compression and still coming out as a top contender? Or, you know what I mean? I guess that's the way this, this should be thought out. So if, if, you, if you really want to focus on keeping your compression low and stuff, when you show up to the races and start really being in a situation where you're comparing, are you a top contender at the races? And if you are, I'd love to know what you're doing to your builds. <laughs> because right now I haven't figured that part out. So. I got to figure out how to make a lower compression build, spin the RPM and maintain torque. Because if I can't do that, I'll never be able to get to the nitromethane performance levels that I want to do. That's kind of where I'm coming from on this. You know what I mean? Right now I'm relying a lot on compression to get me up there, but this is with gas. And as you've seen, I'm just, I'm still new at this nitromethane and alcohol and all that stuff and playing with that stuff. And I got a long ways to go. And I got to figure out the combustion chamber stuff and what works and all that stuff 
for that kind of fuel, you know? And I think, personally, I think that a lot of the low compression stuff might be coming from that side of the racing. Because when you go out to the races, you'll run into a lot of people that if, they, if they're if they running a gas saw, they got to borrow one because they don't even own one. They're racing alcohol, nitromethane and stuff. And I'm wondering if that discussion is really intended to be in that side of it. You know what I mean? And I'm wondering if it's mistakenly getting bled into the gas side of it. I'm wondering if that's a mistake. So you can tell me your opinion on this. I just, that's kind of my thought. And I don't know. Right now, my best saws are up there. They're tickled, they're up to 30, 238 on the pull in, 245 on the, the Holtz Varma, 372 the Hopper built. Um, my 395 that I'm building right now, I don't know what the compression is going to be, but I can tell you already, it's going to be, it's going to be higher. You know what I mean? My Husky 5000, that one's really high. The compression on it is really high. Um, it's probably over 200. I guarantee it's over 200. I've not tested it lately. But I know it's over 200. It's probably in the 220 to 240 range. So, yeah. All of my fastest stuff is pushing 200. We'll say 220 to 240 pounds of compression. All of my fastest stuff. And if you're building top-notch, really fast stuff at 150 pounds of compression... I really need to talk to you because I ain't figured it out yet, you know? And I, it, I'm going to struggle trying to get into this alcohol and nitromethane stuff until I figure that out. But for gas, this is, this is what I figured out. And it's a lot of compression. It's not fun to start at a race or at a race line or for firewood. It's not fun to start for firewood all the time. Um, none of that stuff. Uh, you hear me talk frequently about compression releases. You know, I keep them in for a reason. Um, I'm actually currently going down that path of exploring possibly um, modifying compression releases and you're coming up with a way to help relieve some of that compression or more of the compression to make it even easier to start. Uh, even these, your really high ones, like, you know, my 372 clone. Like, I want to see if I can figure out a way to get a compression release in there that releases more of the compression to make it easier to start. And there's two methods, really. Stick with the, basically the same type of compression release and modify it, or just add a second one. And I'm, I think we'll end up adding a second compression release to make it easier. But when I'm on a starting line and stuff to start it, I don't notice it. It's, it's just something you don't notice. You don't even think about it. You just yank that cord. You already know it's high, so you just really give it a good jerk. It just fires right up. I mean, once it's warmed up, there, you don't have to yank your guts out to start the saw. It starts pretty much first pull. I mean, it's rare that it doesn't start on the first pull every time. Same with that pulling. Rare that it doesn't start on the first pull. So, you know what I mean? And when you're in a situation where you're not thinking about it, it really doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. So... Anyway, yeah, I'll leave the discussion for you guys, and I don't know. We'll see what this journey takes us. You know what I mean? We'll see where this journey takes us. There we go. But, all right, later.